Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to start a new campaign and video in Tiano, the last days of Africa. I'm your host, Mr. Coalition Government of Angola Lover, and we're led by some John D. Lavelle guy, but here we're at playing as a uh, Coalition Government of Angola. So, uh, natural spirits, we've got a looming fiscal crisis. We're 100% poor. We're like, we are so poor, it's not even funny. Like, this is maximum poorness. Uh, we have the Legacy of the Air Empire, which is not bad. Um, we have Unita, MPLA, and Fighting, not good at all. And we also have Fumes of the Battlefields, which is also very, 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 very bad. Oh my god. But the dust settles in the southwest. The war is over, but the reconstruction continues. Air Force General Lavelle will let me be one, of the one overlooking OFN Angola, and there's no doubt the work ahead of him will be difficult, one, and arduous. The weapon fields, or airfields, were prime USAF targets, as Lavelle himself could attest, and it would require significant efforts to bring online. As of now, though, there are many unknown downs on the ground. General Lavelle hopes to hit the ground running to quickly get on with it. The administration and the American people are watching. Also, I don't know if this is still a bug. It might be, it might not be, but I might have to use consequences to make sure we're successful. So, we'll see and heal the scars. Fumes of the battlefield. That would be good to get more political power. Spend a lot of money. Replace centralized agriculture with basic mechanization, which would be good, too. Or the suit vest Africana show secret. A whole on the mandate will increase. I want to heal the scars. Even if the South Africa war has ended for the soldiers, civilians have to live in the artillery moonscapes and the minefields left behind. No new Angolan state or people can reasonably flourish in a country that still bears the scars of the last war, and we must make rebuilding Angola's shattered economy and infrastructure prior to we to leave behind a functioning state. But here we have the interim command. Um, the Rakhs Commissars left an incredibly chaotic mess behind them, and as the new off end mandates, the High Commanders settled on their new territories, new challenges will have to be overcome. The ability of the High Commander to properly reach and control in areas represented by the administrative hold he has over the mandate. Some areas have an easier time than others to increase this value, but the aim of all three of them is to keep this value high. If the admin hold goes under 50%, then the political stability of the mandate will decrease. Political stability is a representation of the chaos that engulfs the continent, as it's such as better keep this value as high as possible to avoid rebellions. The OFN High Command in the U.S. Congress count on the generals to keep the area peaceful and ready for decolonization. We also expect to gain something from it, as the profits would help, immense, uh, help investments in future OFN endeavors. The monetary reserve of mandate is a mix of both profits gained one by one-time deals and by monthly profits of the mandate. The political stability of the mandate is currently fantastic, 75%. The admin hold currently is 30%. The monetary reserve available to command is currently nothing. Request more funding, increase res uh, reserves, which wouldn't be bad. Increase mining exploitation for 7 days when removed. Better industrial regulation, increase liquid reserves by 0 0.05. Green GDP by 1%. Gain extra 15%, 15 million dollars a month in income. Extra money a month, there's not very much. Having someone would be good though. Uh, political stability would increase, admin hold will increase, increase liquid reserves, $5 million, actually a million a month, pacify the main roads, mandate, political stability will increase, spend money, admin hold will increase, which is not bad too. Restore order on the countryside, greatly increase political stability, uh, we spend some money, increase admin hold, uh, but greatly decrease, replace difficult leaders, admin hold will greatly increase, and give out oil rights exploitations. Admin hold will decrease, um, billions plus 0.18. Ooh, 15 million. Well, let's go with this one first. This seems like the best idea. I and this is what we started with. Like, I loaded the save where I did my JFK, not JFK, my RFK save to Romney, Gene Kirkpatrick, Scoop Jackson, and Phyllis Schlafy. So, this is how much political power we started with. So, I no, I did not cheat for that. Just let you know. So, um, we'll try that one. Actually, we'll do all these, but I'm going on developments. The aim of the temporary OFN mandates in Africa is to serve as the transition between general German rule and local sovereignty. If we manage to peacefully carry out our decolonization plans, we'll be able to bring back 80% of the resources we've generated here. If we prematurely, prematurely decolonize it, we'll only bring back 40%. In case of complete collapse, we'll have to abandon the resources we generated here. So, honestly, okay, so here's the economy. It's god awful. Because our excess revenue, this is why I said it might be bugged, is negative 50 billion. I mean, our real growth is 83% growth. Not bad, and we don't have a billion, we have no debt right now until we get to the next month. I'm not sure how much it would be good to like do military austerity at the most right now. I'm not sure how much we really need for that, so... Uh, political stability could go down maybe a little bit. We'll increase. I want more money every month. Um, we're removed. Well, political stability will increase, because we are decreasing our political stability. And increase admin hold. Greatly increase. It will increase a little bit. Well, we'll decrease greatly. Increase greatly. Getting fifty million dollars a month. Oh, well, we'll do them all. We'll see what happens. I really have no idea what's going to happen. I don't like how much debt we have. Yearly deficit's fifty billion. Oh, oh, hello. Oh. Uh. Here. Oh, and now we're now we're playing as Germany. 
Well, we will see. Our request for more funding was approved. Good news from Washington today is we've received word that a request for additional funding has been approved and money will be with us shortly, alongside with a note from the president wishing us well and congratulating us on our continued efforts, of course. Oh god, we got a lot of the bill here. Um, this would be a useful boost for here in Angola. It's enabling us to invest in a number of small economic projects as well as giving us some options for expanding and improving your administration of the mandate. Though there's always more that could be used, this is a welcome injection of aid both for the practical benefits that it bring us and for the signal it sends America's continuing commitment to the open mission in Africa. A welcoming boost for Africa in Africa. Our political power increased the good reserve by 0.4 billion. Admin efficiency begins to improve. Poverty gets better too. Not bad. Um, uh, the reason why the game kind of like did all that is because Apparently, RFK thought it was a good idea to have a completely one giant African state, which I completely agree. That sounds like a lot of fun. Where the heck is Luanda? Uh, there it is. Just bomb it. So, pacify the main roads. Admin hold will increase political mandate because we're now decreasing by 0.1 a week. It's not bad, but still. Um, so, but yeah, that's why it happened. We're unchallenged. That's pretty good. 63%. Oh, oh god, that. 63.9. Oh, prematurely start the decolonization progress. No, we're good. Give out ex oil exploitation rights. Admin hold will decrease. We're on challenge, though. Ah, I'll do it anyways. Also, we have quite a bit of... Oh, we have negative... Oh, my God. A lot of money here. Why do I have such negative growth? From a reserve size of 63%. Oh, it's because of all the extra reserves? That's stupid. Oh, if interrupt interrupt command... Yeah, we don't need to see this one. Also, we keep getting the airship one from the like Angola. So this is still slightly bugged. This is all the Germany, the German one. Rocks come inside Angola, so which does kind of suck. Negative real growth, low reserves. Well, I already invested stuff in here once, so I've already spent all the money we have too. But it is what it is, I guess. Um, yeah. I don't think technology is going to save us, so give out oil concessions or something. But we're here to see an experiment to see what happens. So long as campaign goes, pretty much. Exploitation rights. Let's save our political power. Because right now we get 0.761 monies. Oh, we're actually increasing by 0.12. 0 0.1 as well, I should say. Soon best kind of a secret. Our force has been inspecting the former Arctic to Masariat for research and assessing the sort of damage done to the region, notably. Our force have matched secure Shanks, former residence and headquarters. A quick review of this archives will reveal that Shank has been working with the rebels in secret. The documents outline something of an angle and plot through economic and military development. As advised that General Laval ought to see these documents in person due to the sensitive and controversial nature of the continent. Or the contents. I don't want this one yet because it says we know too little of the players to be sure of the impact. Industrial equipment begins to improve. Although the road network in Angola is never barely well developed, it was so targeted extensively during the war. The current state of that network is a major hindrance to our operations in the mandate, and the widespread destruction has put a stop to communication, transportation, and trade, and left the towns and villages of Angola isolated. This state of affairs needs changing. A rebel road network will cement our mandate. Strengthening our operations is surely as we mean business. It's time to get to work. Or we do this one too. Rebuilding industrial infrastructure. The beating heart of the country is its industrial capacity. Measured not only in terms of factors, but on the technology and distribution networks that allow economies of scale and mass mobilization of the resources across vast geographies. Angola's bust in natural resources, but what its industry remains after the war is antiquated and small in scale. Bringing Angola's economy up to its full potential will require a considerable investment of time and effort, but it will surely pay dividends later to the Angolan people and to their oil fan backers as well. Get out a request for more money. There's quite a bit already here. A good amount of surplus. What if we did that? We could. Credit rating actually went down before. But, uh, still going up. I'll get at least acceptable, so. Oh, well, hidden pass. As entirely unexpected information been revealed to him through the documents left behind by the members of a completely unknown plot. Uh, Lavelle's eyes uh, were wild with shock, his amazement only growing more and more as he read of it. What, what is this? It seemed that Wolfgang Shank had been fighting this, uh, the same cause as them the whole time. The liberation of Angol, even in high in the ranks of the Reich, it seemed that Reich's commissar had been a deeply troubled man and subverted the will of his superiors whenever he thought he could. Though was far from making up for all his uh, services, he performed for the campaigns of German conquest and subjugation. It seemed somewhere in Shank's heart lived some honor. Before, the plan of the mandate had only been the resurrection and preparation of the independence of the liberated territories. Now, Lavelle realized that there was a need to go further to realize Shank's plans. A new national Angolan army would have to be created, trained, and equipped to deal with any threats to the peace or danger to, to its independence. The risks of the idea. Both in Africa and back home, but Lavelle knew that if they let this opportunity slip away, they would haunt him forever. An unknown dream is made reality. Now, what do we want to do here? That's looking good. That's looking not bad. I want more admin hold, too, as well, right now. More admin hold. Political stability will increase. Uh, admin hold will increase. Of course, I want more money, too. 
First order in the country, so that'd be very good too. Increase GDP, get extra money every month, and that's going to decrease what? Political stability. I want more political stability then. Increase mining exp. It's fine. Ooh, I want that one. Political stability will increase. Ah, I'll do that too. You can do all three. So this way we can spend some former liquid reserves. But now poverty's. Holy shnikes. Negative real growth. That's really hurting us. Holy crap. We go in reconstruction plans. That's not bad too. The other one to office. Reconnect the cities. Uh, contact Unito. Foremost in Shanks' plan was Jonas Savimbi. Savimbi. CIA contacts listed him as a capable rebel leader in Angola, despite him having certain goals in opposition to overall objectives in the region. Unito has seen the necessary competence and popularity to bring stability and strength to the region. We've arranged a meeting between Lavelle and Savimbi to negotiate the possibility of collaboration and support one for one another. Hey, we'll see. We will see. You know what? Nothing like an Angolan battleship. Plus 0.3 a week is pretty nice. The Angolan rivalry. Aldebelto. Sugar Chad has switched out the radio broadcast to yet another street brawl between supporters of Angola's two main political movements. People's Movement for the Liberation of Angola versus the National Union for the Total Independence of Angola, Joe remarked. The ironic humor Joe found in the two groups with seemingly identical goals hating each other, with, if anything, even more vitriol than the foreign occupiers of Angola's claim to see on his face. And indeed, despite the strategy, there are certain humor to it, Aldebelto replied. So why are they fighting? Isn't it just like there's one room for enough one big butt in the chair? Uh, and jo Jonas Savimbi and Agostino Nito both want to be the butt, to be, the butt to be theirs. Uh, I'll develop to let a little brief chuckle. Yeah, it's certainly a contributing factor, but it's by the similar name, MPLA and Unito were both have very different visions for Liberty Angola. Unito is where you want Americans to call a big tech party, containing both authoritarian and democratic factions, held together by the charisma of Jonas Savimbi. MPLA, on the other hand, is a more ideologically unified Marxist party, despite having fewer supporters and less international attention than Unito. MPLA controls most of the cities and has better leadership overall, so it manages to hold its own. Hmm, I hope they'll be able to work something out by the time we leave, Joe said, on his hand on his chin. I doubt it, Alberto. Adalberto responded, shaking his head again. Those two have been feuding since the Nazis ruled this place, and I'm sure they'll keep feuding well after you're gone. A heretic someone who's only agrees with you about 99% of things. Maybe we should have spent all my political power then. The rivalry. Now, when the coalition government of Angola was given a general level, they were far from understanding the complexity of the local situation. The independence movements in Angola are plenty, but among those two particularly stands out. The biggest one, Unito. It's a democratic movement led by a calm commander who can't decide between bring, being a freedom fighter and a military score lord, Jonas Savimbi. Extremely charismatic, and has managed to get most of the attention abroad. abroad. A more discreet but still fierce movement is the MPLA, led by Agostino Nito. His Marxist Leninist group is the biggest rival of Unito, and due to its anti colonial uh, uh, ideology, have problems with working with the OFM, but they've shown they're capable and that they rely more than one figure to lead the movement when Unito is more or less defined by only Savib Savimbi. While neither of these movements are ideal, they are the best bets that OFN has in the region, and General Lavelle will need help from one or the other as to solidify the movements. However, giving too much power will, to one will only let up the rivalry again and will destabilize Angola rapidly if left unchecked. Instability caused by this rivalry changes the overall stability of the mandate by 0.5% weekly. Balance isn't just a matter of stability, so a lot of sides will be given, chosen, chosen the, to lead the nation moving forward. Giving a strong advantage to one group over the other will give the ability to rule more strength and thus last longer. On the contrary, will the equilibrium does, does make the country a little more stable? It also creates a government that feels less legitimate, and it's a high risk of coups. The OFN High Command in Washington strongly advises General Lavelle to choose a side and stick to it. It's up to him to choose which one he believes will bring the best future to Angola. That's made the uh, strength of future Angolan government if the government is the strongest movement. No one equilibrium. Peace keeping operation. Strength of Unita. Yeah. We did do a tax hike earlier, so. Inflation's risen up quite a bit. I need a bit more political power now. Huh. Study the plans. Military intelligence analysis can at least conclude that Shank was serious about his Angolan plan. He drew up everything, contingencies in case of discovery, economic plans to industrialize, and even took steps to develop bureaucracy that allows his eventual departure. We're we'll still trying to evaluate the viability of his plans, but one thing is certain the other mandates do not have the head start that we do. These plans were designed with natives in mind, but it lacked the resources. At a preliminary reading, with the backing of the U.S., they are very well can become a reality. If the U.S. has the will to shell out the necessary funding, we could truly have a chance to rebuild the nation from the ground up. Probably dump a lot, most of our political power here because that's on challenge. It's not going up anymore, but 8% is pretty good. Um, 
0.589 million is not bad too. The, the, you need to trail. Small outpost some kilometers from Luanda. Private Hudson and Private First Class Rodriguez swelled in their uniforms. They have need to kindly to foreigners, making it a heck for the two unfortunate men. How long do we have to keep relaying the message for you, you reckon? Asked Hudson, wiping away his profuse sweat. Do we get a response? Stated Rodriguez. Walking over the radio, manning it, twisted his knobs, and adjusted the frequency. Listening closely for any response other than pure silence. Still nothing, Rodriguez noted. Lighting a cigarette as he shook his head begrudgingly. That was, uh, started up Hudson as he kind of silently. Tenth down, we blew back the broad gas. I hope as you need it, folks, for his. Pipe it, I'm picking up something, said Rodriguez, placing his ear closer to the radio. Get Mr. Derrick's on the line now. In his office, Klaus and Derrick's. Sit around hopelessly. You hope to engage in talks with the Unita, but as each day passed, we know where or from or about them. As the opportunity to do so waned. Suddenly, his desk phone rang. Derrick's picked up lazily, expecting another mundane check by Lavelle or some local administration report. Well, he was greeted, however, by the man's gruff voice, his speech bombastic as he spoke over the line. Derrick's couldn't help but grin. It is I, Joseph Malhero Savimbi, leader of the Unita, speaking. I accept the offense offer for assistance. I want to do this stuff too. This stuff as well. We decided to go by go our, by our beat, independent of the MPLA or Unita. Oh boy, uh, that's not bad too. That's pretty good. All more political power though. So we'll do this one, of course, and we'll study the plans. Um, this is gives us more political memories of the battlefields with fading memories of the battlefields, which would be pretty good. And golden reconstruction program, which we lose political power still, which still sucks. Replace utterly unregulated with token regulations, which is okay. Replace no pollution controls with few pollution regulations. Um, Reconnect the cities. That would be bad either. The one to office. Fix Shank's mistake. That's not bad. We know too little of the players. So maybe we should contact the MPLA. Maybe we should go through all this stuff first. During the South African War, the MPLA was mostly in the background compared to the UNITA. The membership was low and barely had a partisan presence compared to the Savimbi's men. However, time to change the Marxist Lenin's rhetoric is gaining more and more followers. Thus, we have to arrange a meeting between Agostino. Neto and General Lavelle for the purpose of discussing collaboration with the future of, of Angola. Radio Angola, you need the massacre. From uh, the supposed uh, repurposed uh, SS radio base in the outskirts of uh, Melange, Radio Angola's morning broadcast was heard across the nation. As biased and occasionally unprofessional as the station could be, it was for many urban Ang Angolans. The premier source for journalism is naked bias and stark contrast to the centrist American screens. Today they came with a message of defeat, anger, and revenge. Good morning, Angola. This is Yao Conclaves, chief reporter at Radio Angola. Today they came with the heavy news. As you come as no surprise that Unita has descended upon a valiant MPLA stronghold. Such actions have defined the actions of some VMB as gangs since they stood alongside the German oppressor. What may shock you is the, to the toll. Over a dozen men de lie dead today, killed in a senseless, needless battle against Unita thugs. That's what we mean when we say you must protect your community. In the anarchy that the American occupiers have allowed to fester, you are at risk of a Unita attack on any moment. There is but one answer. Prepare. For when Savi becomes your doorstep, you need to know exactly what will come next. It seems Radio Angola predicts violence. Oh no. Um, we know too little of the players to be sure of the impact of this. I'm not sure, we, do we rush through this side, or do we rush through the left side first, and then do all the stuff on the right? I think I want to do all the stuff on the left first. St Stabilized industry would be very nice, too. Because um, I do want to do this one, but... Pick up where you left off. We can delay no longer. We have evaluated most of Shanks' archives and must make a decision, either act or bear the archive. The optics do not look good, and any administration would no doubt raise up a fuss or even an investigation should they realize that the extent of our nation-building exercise is based on the foundations of a card-carrying Nazi. A bit to Laval... Level for how transparent we wish to be with the modern administration. In any case, it would be an utter waste to bury Shanks' plans. We would be no different, different than the rest of the mandates. Get in, get the resources, get out. General Lavelle has so far taken a wait-and-see approach to see what must be done, but the plans seem that, although ambitious, could very well be a reality in a few years. Oh, and Angola could be very well be the only mandate that leaves the continent with a stable state when we depart. To act on the rivalry, said so to go by, or, go by or beat, independent of the MPLA or UNITA. Okay. Uh, still looking pretty good here. Yeah, going down by 0.5 every week sucks. Enya's not bad. Rivalry worsens, huh? We're gonna keep pu pushing them up. The MPLA connection. It's been several days since the letter was sent, and there was still no response. When the orphan initially attempted to contact the MPLA in order to begin talking to them, it had not taken them very long to find them. What's much more difficult is convincing them to accept working with, rather than against, uh, the OFN. As such, Laval had personally written a letter to Nito, detailing his vision of a free Angola where nobody would decide the direction the country took except for uh, the Angolans themselves, and see how this could be best accomplished with cooperation between the OFN and the MPLA. And after so much time had passed, more than enough of a response to be written, sent, and received, Lavelle was almost ready to give up on the idea of cooperating with them and prepare for conflict instead. Before he could finally decide on this new course of action, though, an aide ran up to him with a letter in hand, offering a quick salute over an excited face. He finally replied, Sir, Agostino Nito. 
Taking the letter from the A with a grin, uh, Lavelle opened it up to read its contents. Did you know, Lavelle? Hope this letter finds you good health. After some consideration, I've decided to accept cooperation with and help from the OFM. However, as a precaution, this agreement will only be maintained to its limited extent. Sincerely, Agostino Nito. What I'm going to extend that he won, just the fact that he would have, would have to fight the MPLA every step of the way was quite a relief. Good sign for stability. Arm the warlords. Shift the balance more in the rivalry. Training the natives. Oh, that's not bad. More daily political power would be very good. Uh, one of the most first objectives of a proper, stable nation state is security. And those armed forces are in a sorry state. They were disciplined enough. Uh, to, uh, for insurgent operations, but it's far easier to harass an enemy than to protect the nation. General Lavelle sees this as the next obstacle preventing a stable Angola and has thus delegated the role to General William M. or Je William W. Momnier. Although he's a tough man to work with at times, he could surely do a great job to improve Angola's security situation. Reconnect the cities. As we're driving to build the infrastructure as Angola goes on, the country's slowly being weaved back together. While it's a great boon to most of the population, it's also causing tension in some quarters. Towns and cities getting back in contact, it also means prices converging in new goods and markets. Drinking complaints and protests from the merchants and craftsmen that are undercut. Must make it clear that nothing will come of such protests. Cities of Angola must always be willing to talk with one another, work with one another, and trade with one another for the benefit of all. It's time to unify the administration. And the Angolan Reconstruction Program. Much of the Angolan economy was owned and operated by the Arx Commissariat directly and now has fallen in our hands. Now we're taking full stock of the industries we found ourselves in charge of it, it's time to set in motion the Vell's plans for the future. We'll ignore the voices from home calling for the privatization. Instead, keep ownership of the enterprises. Through the Angolan Reconstruction Program, we'll then direct their proceeds to development projects across the mandate, clearly demonstrating a good intentions to its populace. Because why not? Political tensions or political stability decrease a little bit. I was trying to save a lot of political power. We're doing all right. I'm not really concerned with this one, so. And we still have just a little bit of money in reserves, too, which is actually pretty good, too. <coughs> excuse me. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. We have a little bit of deficit, 9% growth, but that ain't bad. Considering everything else, we're doing okay for now. But after the ongoing reconstruction program, we we'll start the factories. <coughs> sure. Our efforts to reconnect Angola are starting to bear fruit. As the road network expands, goods and people are moving again, town by town, village by village, and goals waking up. The next half of the country is getting back to work. Now that our access to inputs, labor, and markets are stored, it's time to AARP. The factories. Nearly at a large, nearby a large construction site in Luana, guarded by American soldiers, the pub was operated always full in the evening as the workers at the site left for the day. Two of them sat together for a table, half empty drinks and ham. I'm telling you, Alberto, for all their easy talk, these Americans are just smiling Germans. The one speaking was named Enrique, a burly man nearly, nearly middle age. They don't plan to choose to leave this country, the dudes. The man next to him, Alberto, a muscular young man with an oddly gentle smile, raised an eyebrow. Isn't the fact that you can say that openly proof proves that the Americans are better than the Germans? In response, Enrique rolled his eyes, as if even asking well, that was a question. Ha, ah, there's no such thing as a better master when you're the slave. There might be one to act nice, but in the end, they're all the same. He waved over to the bartender, hey, Ernesto. Another round drinks on me and my friend here. That made Alberto chuckle. Enrique was as lively as ever. You might be right, my friend. They say they came here to protect the peace, but they, the longer they stay, the more I wonder what peace they're here to protect. Whatever peace makes it money, Raphael in order to order close to retirement book up. That's why it was always is with these outsiders. This isn't that right, Enrique. You're darn right, Enrique. Greets sipping his beard. It's always about their profits. No sense in getting your hopes up. I was arming the warlords. Um, <clears throat> the situation is unstable. Given America's increasing displeasure of troops on the ground, we are tasked with trying to make it work with what limited manpower we have at our disposal. As of now, we're looking at any number of Nazi holdouts, partisans who haven't come in from the cold and in general decline the security situation beyond the cities and even within the cities. We're simply stretched too thin. We're turning around the rapidly declining situation. General Lavelle has authorized weapons shipments to both the Unitent and MPLA. Given that the administration has tasked us with stabilizing and rebuilding Angola, these words really aren't that out of scope. We're not the only players in town. The weapons are for the Savimbi and Neto to probably start securing the country for Angolans. Balance warlords' influence? Well, that's pretty much what we always do. More political stability, we are unchallenged at 97%. Is very, 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 very good. Slightly increase. Um, add more to the debt, which I don't really want to do. I want more money every month. Uh, mandate. Uh, that's not what we want. It's okay. <clears throat> Admin hold will decrease slightly. Still going up a little bit, though. Uh, I'm going to do that one for now. It's fine. Actually, you know, I should have done this one, too. Because you could be in operations because you get more political stability. That's what I should have done. And get more stability that way, too. Well, and next time. I'm not super concerned about it. We have enough. You know, we're doing all right. 9% growth. 1.08 billion. Every month. Oh, look at that. Our crediting improved. Awesome. Great industrial foundation. That's not bad. I'm the warlords first, though. So. Uh, meet with Savi Sa Sa Savimbi. The future of Angola comes to the forefront once again. Of course, Lavelle plans to talk with Jonas Savimbi. Obviously, officially. The meeting would be about policy, but Lavelle is also probing for his view on the future of Angola. Savimbi is a fighting man, but isn't that what Angola needs anyways nowadays? 
Even now, the country is not ready for democracy with the instability and poverty of the region. Perhaps a strong hand will be needed to guide a goal towards a brighter future. <clears throat> Hopefully. Oh, we actually more production units have too. Nice. Let's build up the city stuff. Why would pads account Boggins? Well, it's not like really building and needing it too much. Oh, and there it goes, the French Civil War. Wow. Well, before they all die here. I don't think any of these guys have unique focus trees, so. Nope. Liberals. Revolution in front, huh? Communists and socialists, huh? So now we're acceptable. Oh, that went up. Oh, that's not good. We have a slight deficit, but our growth is looking pretty good. Advanced anti tank equipment, not bad. There you go. Arm in the wool is discussed with Neto. Between the former military and playing referee between Union and the MPLA, it seems. Uh, that General Lavelle is geared for the latter. We're looking at a nice meeting between Agnisto Neto and Lavelle, and this time focus on policy here. Diplomacy experts have drafted a few talking points regarding the future of Angola to clarify some of his positions. To be fair, there's a few things we could already guess at. He is perhaps with the greatest socialist voice in Angola nowadays. We're hoping that his ideological popularity could translate into some semblance of sanity for, or stability for the whole nation. Uh, right Angola, M MPLA victorious. If you want to read about <clears throat> this top one here, please go ahead. Um... Let's see, Chief reports. I'm certain that the listeners at home have been waiting for the whole week. MPLA forces have proven victorious after sustained skirmish left Unita forces scrambling. Though only a single town has been taken, Unita appears to have suffered serious casualties, numbering up to a dozen. <clears throat> with a victory, MPLA is a step closer to ridding the south of the despot Savimbi for good. Just as importantly, it sends a message to the Americans. Once again, we have given them a reminder that we are not going to accept whatever compromise best lines their pockets. We're going to have actual justice, the, the kind of American, or a Unita thug, for that matter, could ever imagine. This is just a taste of the victor victory to come. Just imagine what's coming next week. Stuff. Pay debts. <clears throat> no debts is a good thing. Let's go to the Neto, discuss with him. Establishing a native army. Although the training's been going well, militia units are not ideal for the security of an entire nation. A nation needs an army, which is why General Lavelle is formally authorized the creation of Angolan armed forces. To cure some favor of the Savimbian unit, we have selected Commander Desmothens Asmos Chinigitila. To head this new organization, a grizzled veteran from years of resistance under the Ro Nazi Rocks Commissariat, we're sure they do an excellent, excellent job. Give him political power, which is great, and the free Angolan army. A discussion with Agostino Neto. After reaching out to the MPLA about having a talk with Neto, they had directed him to Neto's current headquarters, a simple home yet just on the outskirts of Luanda. After the bell knocked on the door three times, the door was finally opened by one of Neto's aides, who directed him to the living room with a smile. Well, at least his friendliness was a good sign, Lebel thought. Walking into the living room, he saw Neto himself for the first time, a plain looking middle aged man with wearing glasses, sitting on an old couch in the living room, not all what Lebel had expected. Looking up when Lavelle walked in, Neto grinned and pointed at the seat beside him. Please come and sit, he told Lavelle. When Lavelle did so, Neto nodded to himself as Zoe was pleased and continued. I hear you seek my cooperation, General Lavelle. You're well informed, that's exactly right, Lavelle replied with a mild surprise. It's yours for now, I assure you, though if I sense your acting against the interests of the Angolan people in general, I cannot promise that this occupation will continue. Is that clear? By the Angolan people in general, he most likely meant the MPLA in particular. Yes, that is acceptable, Lavelle answered, wisely choosing not to give his voice to his thoughts. I may say one more thing, I'm very thankful for the reconstruction efforts of the OFN. You are providing a great place for the growth of socialism, and I sincerely have my gratitude for that, Neto. Patted Lavelle in the back, and again flashes grin, though the general couldn't help but feel that Savimbi too was biting his tongue. After he finally left his short but fruitful meeting with Neto, Lavelle wondered how a man so devoted to the socialist cause, even so clearly humble, could hope to resolve Angolan intentions without violence. Hmm. A man of the people is what Angola needs. Versus. Interest and in protector interests. Lose 90 political power. Increase a bit, increase a bit. Oh, I'll go with that one for now. That's a lot. Go to this one as well. Strength is. Oh, wait. MPLA. Oh, so what happens to Unita? Wow. Um. Strength in men. Decrease. 5, 10. Give him men, why not? Consolidate an army. The local militias in Angola are far more organized and well equipped than rather than compatriots across much of the former Rex Commissariats. Capable of operating as a larger conventional force instead. Oh, look at that. Oh, God. Um, I'll be in a regular force of guerrilla infantry. It is a promising foundation for unified Angolan military and under OFN guidance with military weapons, the Angolan armed forces will become the backbone of the new Angolan state. <coughs> Which won't be too bad for us, so. First nuke? Nice. 83, Jesus Christ.
Gonna have to do that. Eight. Ooh, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good, man. Not good. Surplus is looking okay. Growth is looking okay, too. Almost like no inflation, too. I mean, join us, Avivi. It's been quite a journey, but Lavelle finally reached Unita's inland headquarters. We've been told to go asking about the meeting with uh, Jonas Savimbi. Being escorted by the Unita members of the man near the center of the camp, Lavelle found himself looking over some papers in a chair facing a table underneath the tarp with another chair on the opposite side of the table. The general's here to see you, Commander, one of Lavelle's Unita escorts announced. That made Savimbi uh, look up from his work and smile to Lavelle, though it didn't seem sincere. Ah, oh, yes, please come have a seat. Uh, after the escorts gave a crisp, admirable salute and Lavelle took the other chair, Savimbi continued, What do you need, General Lavelle? I was hoping to ask for your further support on the transition to the Angolan democracy. The vote replied honestly while studying some VB's face for a, a reaction. Democracy, of course. I'll spare no effort to see it through. Some VB grinned endearingly, and Lavelle began to realize why so many men were willing to fight for him. Though, if you don't mind me saying so, I have some plans of my own to make this democracy more effective so that when I take control. You mean when Angolans take control? That makes the VB pause for a moment. Yeah, yes. My plans are to make more, more peaceful democracy. I see, send them to me and I'll make sure to have a look. Lavelle found that he managed to, even if he didn't know how useful they'd be. That aside, it was a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Sunvimi, but I must be leaving for now, for the sake of the reconstruction effort. Upon leaving the camp, Lavelle couldn't help but wonder how, for all of his supposed love of democracy, a man as prideful as Sunvimi could keep the country both free and functional. Just another spying dictator. What? Okay. Sure. Why not? Great Industrial Foundation. How are the natives? We will to office. The work we're building in Gold require more than money and construction here and now, but also conference of plan to restructure and establish sound on Golden State and economy. Shane's plan to grant. Then Golden's independence was a decent start, but it's several problematic assumptions. We're we'll correct these mistakes with the free debate, and deliberation is only possible in the free world. I mean, improvements improvements will be made, which would be nice as well. But happy January 1968, everybody. The man in the Iron Fortress, if you want to do that, please go ahead. I love American capitalism. Yeah, that's still looking good. Equipment's looking pretty decent, though. Also, convert these guys to these temp templates, so that's why we're saving a little bit more money, too, so. Yeah. It was up, up, and down. It's not bad. Oh, hello. Napalm attacks. Oh, thanks, America. I love napalm attacks. Blowing up black babies. Ah, I love RFK. The Free Angolan Army. In an American military camp near the Wanda, officers were gathered around a table inside of a tent. Uh, two of them setting out from the rest of the Herodox uniform. Each of the two stood at one end of the table, which served as a divide between them. The Ico Carrera of the MPLA and the Demosthenes Emos Chin Chilingitila of UNITA were for once working together and not against each other. In order to establish a national army for Angola from Angola, I think that everything we need that's everything we need to talk about, Carrera told the assembled officers. No, not everything. Chilingitila. Took a shook its head and stared at as if looking for a reaction. We still haven't decided how the command will operate. We'll, we keep putting it off, but we must. it must be said that for this army to function, I see that officers must be close to the men, not just far away and ignorant. Local autonomous command is for our best option. Are you some sort of idiot? Carrera asked. And Chilingutilia bristled. Without a powerful centralized command, our army will fall apart in the heat of battle. What are you suggesting isn't fit for little children, let alone a modern army? Chilingutilia clutched his fists and glow glowered at Carrera, but did not raise his voice when he spoke next. You would have men. Be mere puppets, incapable of action on their own and failing from over from a gust of wind. After a moment of rising tension, they both stared at the guns with increasingly nervous American officers in the tent. What do you all think? Carrera asked. Despite some initial hesitation, none objected when one of them gave the opinion they had been convinced of by one of the two men. Well, what we need is strong central army. Unit autonomy. Well, we need more unita. Native army, huh? Luanda office? That'd be nice. That'd be good, too. Big Shanks mistakes. Free press would be good. Yeah. Um, not bad. And then we're going to keep working on uh, political stability. I meant for the best. Big Shanks mistakes. Wolfgang Shank, for all his good intentions, had to work in an intense secrecy. He may have dreamt of a free Angola, bringing notables and partisan movements together with the resources he could command, but throughout all, he had a plan for eventual resistance. From German loyalists, collaborators, from militia keeping. Militia's keeping their home safe from an incipient civil war, but the weapon operates with a mandate from the people in the international community. To prepare Angola for independence, and if we expect the Angolan people to come willingly on the journey to freedom, they all need to be kept informed every step of the way. You need to massacre, oh boy. Balance southwest. It turns out Wolfgang Schenk didn't organize his push for a free Angolan state through idealism alone. 
The financial books of the former Sufi African government are completely and utterly fraudulent. A vast web of overreported performance and inflated requisition requests to fool German, Germany's bureaucrats while building the foundations for the future Angola. Unfortunately, Shang's gamble left us with a serious problem, namely, that the economic records of the Sudan West African government are useless to us. We'll essentially be forced to rebuild the Angolan economy from the ground up. We're blindfolded. Um, uh, and if our plans to rebuild Angola to exceed, this must be rectified, of course, in the Luanda office. Officer Lopez reporting, sir, take a look at this, said the officer, placing a folder on the desk. We received some intel and complied, compiled it for your viewing. Expect more soon, stated Lopez, saluting as he promptly left the room. Diverting his eyes away from the view outside, General Lavelle stared at the document curiously. Well, it helped many like it before. This one's condition was not great. With worn edges and a torn cover, it had suffered some mismanagement, yet one thing remained the same throughout each folder. And blazing on it was the logo of an eagle and shield surrounding the word Central Intelligence Agency. Shifting through the files, Lavelle read each one meticulously. There was only so much he could do to scrape together, whether acquired from cooperation with the UNITA or dug up from the old Rex Commissariat's archives. Piecing them together, however, painted a grim picture of Angola and his people. Reports of UNITA and MPLA guerrillas engaging one another, dossiers containing locations of potential Nazi holdouts, and land surveys expressing the unprecedented amount of destruction that the South African War brought upon the geography and infrastructure. Lavelle was done on the information. He and the rest of the Luanda Office Committee had only arrived a few days prior, yet they had already been served a large plate of problems to deal with. Shooting the folder, Lavelle rose from the chair, his chair, and observed the scenery outside, laying before him was the battered city of Luanda, slowly recovered from its near destruction during the war. Further out was the bay, and by extension, the insurmountable Atlantic. And just like the ocean itself, Lavelle thought Angola's problems were vast and without an end in sight. And how far down does this rabbit hole go? I also keep doing this stuff, too. Communications across the southwest? It's frankly a miracle that Rex Commissar Shanks' abortive plan for a revolution got off the ground, beyond a central line of communication between Windhoek and Leopoldville. There are hardly any telephone linkages between Angola's various cities and vill villages. With couriers still the most reliable method of transporting messages throughout the country, but for the Angola to rejoin the modern world and ensure that Angola government can keep the tabs on the pulse of its people, it must put, build out a modern telecommunications infrastructure for the country. I'm going down quite a bit, but whatever. I'm not super concerned. Happy, happy April. Sukarno resigns. Well, goodbye, Sukarno. In the meantime, we're going to grab one of these Stroms. It is 68, so we're fine. And we have bloated reserves, which is not good, too. I'd like to invest it, but, you know, whatever. Um, your surplus, not bad. Ta tax cut? Here, do that. More growth? We still have surplus? Why not? Um, in the meantime, we have a little bit less stability, but we're 100% for admin hole, which is maybe not that difficult for this stuff. We have way more unity up here, though. So, I'm not sure how this will work. Future and going government. Given the strongest movement, no one equilibrium, 22%. Mm, do that one too, anyways. More stability. Because we can. So, we're assuming we can invest. Some more money. Um, so, we're going to do the admin reworks. The old administrative apparatus and goals are fully borrowed from the former Portuguese colonial regime. Bare bones and resources. And a reliant colonial administrators will live in the local population with no participation in their own governance. We need to rectify this if we were to leave Angola with any hope of a responsible self government after we leave, preferably one that doesn't collapse and enter enter sign fighting between the MPLA and UNITA. Yeah, that'd probably be good. Listen to the direct proposal. The landscape of Angola's vast rugged with miles between population centers with a substandard infrastructure. Klaus Dirks, our principal economic advisor, notes that even with our planned improvements of communications and transport infrastructure, it can still take days to move between major population centers without re relying on ruinously expensive air transport. He proposes that we decentralize political decision-making authority to individual states and municipal authorities. The plan isn't the most popular. Our OFN colleagues already had the troubles uh, negotiating with different arms of the central government, but in order to leave a functioning government behind, it might be the worst plan. Instead of transitional governance. Happy June, everybody. Happy, happy June. Um, uh, with the decolonization within our South, we need to address the issue of who leads the future Angolan government. We have done our best to make sure all factions are included in the political process. Only one can stand above the rest of the lead Angolan to this new future. Maybe this is one first. Yeah. Well, I should like to see a future Angolan government friendly to American interests and other partners in the transition process, but we would much rather see Angola free to determine all aspects of its future policy. The discussion resolves around Jonas Savimbi and Agostino. Uh, Neho, and all that remains to be seen is to choose which holds the reins power once we leave. The others, well, they'll have to figure it out on their own. Uh, Great industrial foundation, prosperity is not achieved overnight and ever haphazardly. An advanced economy relies on connections. Raw materials must be connected to refineries, feeder in industries to their upstream, and consumer industries uh, to the market. We will provide a robust framework for Angolan industry, a foundation which will prosper future Maybe can be Klaus built. Derek's report. Going over the papers for him one last time, Klaus Derek's smile grew wider and wider as saw his plans finally coming together. Angola is a very disconnected country. Have you never much infrastructure in the first place except where I necessarily extract resources? I fact that I was worsened by all those years of abusive Nazi hands. 
Well, this rural nature of mine, as well as a very diverse cultural makeup of the country, I developed a plan to overcome that easy administration for any central government. Decentralization. Well, at first I had the idea from Namibia, with only a few modifications, he made it workable for Angola as well. While well, his critics, with their insistent jealousy, might disagree, saying that he was placing too much confidence in the single plan, and endangering the mandate, he knew that this would only bring more prosperity for the Angolans. Gathering his papers, he got up to go and present the report. He has the right spirit, at least. As we will try to hire the natives, but I guess we'll exit for Nujomi's government. The question of Sam Nujoma's Namibian government in exile wasn't one that General Lavelle had planned to answer. Revolutionary outlook and opposed the South African rule. The organization poses a direct challenge to the orphan mission in Africa. While it's unpalatable to our leadership, however, it's popular locally, and outright condemnation can do real damage to our own standing. For this reason, we've conveniently considered the organization outside of the remit of our mandate up until now. Unfortunately, this is not to last. The close ties between New Yoma and the Angolan MPLA are increasingly forcing the issue, and it seems that we'll have to take a stance. Unfortunate. And you know what? Still doing okay here. I don't know why it's so difficult. With, when he plays America, I don't know why it's so difficult to get you know make things stable. Shocking stalemate, that's fine, whatever. Uh, peacekeeping missions, I want... Uh, you needed it to win, so... Go with that for now. Yeah, money-wise, we have we are always have more than enough money. I wish I could say this forever, but a man under cover. Gunter was a bit too big for the Yankee uniform, and it was difficult for him to walk in it. There's some true word that it would rip. He had to remain recognizably American for the planet work, and... The uniform was one of the most important parts of that. In his army, he clutched a rifle taken from the same dead Yankee he had found in disguise, but he knew they may not fool any American military personnel. But he needed to fool the natives. The operative had, he had contacted had promised him an iron cross. It would carry out the plan. Gunter was too smart to believe that, but it did not matter to him. It was a patriot willing to help his country against their enemies, even if he did not receive a reward. Nevertheless, Gunter hoped that had been the, tr tr the truth after all. He knew his father would be proud if he received it. The village had been friendly to Americans thus far, and Gunter knew they would let him in without a fight. He was counting on it, cocking his rifle, made the way through the town towards those sneers that trusted the Americans to bring them a better life. The sound of gunfire filled the air. Another massacre in Africa. So we'll see. Transiting up uh, a transitional government. In the end, the resort of the Luanda Conference has been something few would have had much faith in. A compromise. Neither Unito nor the MPLA had significant power over the other, and the new government was intended to be the one where both forces would have to work together equally. Too many, however, and in particular to one, General William W. Momnier, a solution that was clearly never going to work. There must be some mistakes, sir, he asked his direct superior, John D. Lavelle. You both and I know that as soon as we leave, this agreement will break down. We'll never find a leader acceptable to both sides, and the differences between the factions are impossible to resolve. Yes, I'm aware of this, but what would you have me do? Tear up the whole agreement and tell them to start from scratch? That only makes things worse. Lavelle aside, his head in his hands. Momnier had never been a very vocal man when it came to what he thought. If the situation was bad enough to push him even to the, bring this up to Lavelle, then the future here was bleak indeed. It's all we can ask that the peace be kept until we withdraw. As silence fell upon the two of them for a moment, Momnier looked unconvinced. Lavelle couldn't blame him. He had, hadn't even convinced himself. I just hope that you know what you're doing, sir. As the door slammed shut behind his subordinate, Lavelle just let out a long, tired sigh. Did he not know what he was doing? What a question. He wasn't sure anymore, but how are the natives? The purpose of our industries is not only to secure an economic base, but also to provide a stable source of employment for the natives. Now that they are up and running, we should start a drive to hire natives to as many positions as possible. These jobs will provide a source of stable income and employment to Angolans. The workers can then, then go on to spend these incomes purchasing goods from local traders and craftsmen, lift lifting the whole entire economy. I'm gonna keep cutting taxes. I want more growth. Um, give you some more stability, I guess, too. Uh, we're almost maxed out. I'm almost maxed out. That's always that's so good. That's not funny. This is weird. Still tons of poverty, but we don't talk about poverty here. We're doing okay. American unitary government, unity government, East African summit. Oh, American lack leadership. Eliminate troublesome warlords. Oh, they're getting close. How's the Congo doing? Under Abrams. Busy. Keep it American and bad German sympathizers. New sting man, American way. Huh. Or short order in the Congo. Future Hitler shot. Alright. The Namibian renegade. The son of an opening door snapped Lavelle out of his thoughts as he sat doing paperwork in his office. Uh, looking up, he saw the Klaus Derek stood in the doorway. Ah, oh, Mr. Dix, please come in. He told him quickly with a thin smile, What brings you to my office today? Is there something the matter? Oh, it goes East Africa. Nothing's a matter, sir, Dex replied. That is, nothing that can't be solved without much trouble. Having entered, he had to close the door behind him, making it difficult for others to listen in on the conversation. Let's choose the southern border with the Namibian refugees there. The government exiled the Namibians, the one led by Nujoma. With its great influence among them, they're beginning to become troublesome. A smile became a frown, the bell's brow furrowed, and how so? 
The Germans' government is closely allied with the MPLA, so these refugees could disrupt the balance of power within Angola. As well as cause trouble for the South Africans, you know, the high command refuses to recognize New Joma as a legitimate leader. So we're left with two to options. Dirk's clear to so it never see, and Lavelle immediately knew neither option was going to be appealing. We can stand by the position of the OFN and deal with it ourselves, or we can pass the issue to South Africa. The choice is yours, sir. After a moment of weighing two bad choices against each other, here uh, Lavelle finally uh, decided must do as OFN wishes. South Africa will do as they must. And we'll go with this one. Loaded reserves? We always have loaded reserves. Whatever. After hiring the natives, stabilizing this uh, industry. Oh, more growth, too. I like that. Well, the Angolan industry is now up and running and providing jobs and goods to the populace. So relying on our support and know how to fully understand on its own two feet. Angola needs a domestic knowledge base, both for management and workers. Trade schools and clubs will be built. So that knowledge base, we'll build that knowledge base. While well, on the job training and a commitment to the sound management, we'll ensure all the progress made is retained. We'll stabilize the Angolan industry, of course, so that we can serve the country for decades to come. Increase our GDP. I don't mind spending a little bit of money right now. 2%. Oh, RFK got sec uh, sucked for a second term, huh? Good job, RFK. Dismantles Australian nuclear arsenal, huh? Oh, happy February, everybody. Happy February. Inflation's kind of slowly coming up and creeping up. The GDP is increasing by quite a bit. It's pretty good. I'd like to invest all that money, though. Australia. No unique focus tree yet, but eventually. Oh, wow. Our growth just hit, like, halved. That's not good, but a leap of faith. The time for decolonization's come with Shanks dreamt up in secrecy. We're now on the doorstep of accomplishing. A free Angola joining the brother of free nations. We can only hope that our efforts to midwife this transition, building infrastructure, laying out a new economy, bring the various factions together, will be enough to ensure that after we leave, Angola can stand on its own two feet. Let's be real, the Africans are just going to kill each other, probably. Oh, wow, we're actually down here, huh? There you go. What do I do with all this money? Do I max out military spending? Oh, maybe not. There you go. Let's have a little bit of a deficit. So if we do this, we do get quite a bit more growth. A little bit of deficit, just a little bit. So it starts cutting down the money that we make to now. And this should give us what? More organization, uh, monthly military professionalism, daily air XP, army XP, not navy XP though. Because that wouldn't make any sense why it would. Watchbook cronyism, so it is going up, which is better. Um, 0.5 billion help destroy the bloated reserves. I like how I just hope we're high. We get a negative debt on the interest. Interest on the debt. That'd be kind of funny. But we'll see what happens when the leap of faith and begin the decolonization process. Go long, Angola. Staring out of the window of his office and seeing the city of Luanda below, Lavelle thought about the situation in Angola now and found himself him. Although repairs are still becoming incomplete and the fragility of the current politics, every minute the OFN remained on Angolan soil only further broke down the peace that had been delicately built in the country. And so it had been decided that at long last for the mandate to end, the troops were to return home. For the good, though, there remained something that Lavelle needed to accomplish, the Luanda Conference. There, near the political future, the country would be discussed, decided, and agreed upon. Lavelle had more than his fair share of doubts about what would be accomplished. Given how polarized the people were, and it left a sour taste in his mouth not seeing the reconstruction efforts suited to the end, but it was time to take a leap of faith and see what happened. We must trust in the reason. As we are still so, uh, doing this too. Look, conference. The meeting rooms in the heart of Luanda's old city bustled with discussion. Security had been bumped up more than ever as MPLA and you needed figures drove into town with crowds watching from the buildings. The Angolan people, after occupation by the Japanese, or the, not the Portuguese, German, and Americans, some might soon forge their own path. General Le John LaBelle opened the conference to all the representatives at the present, emphasizing his wish for peaceful withdrawal of troops across the mandate, along with the return of the all American prisoners. His speech, short and simple, gathered applause from all present. First speaker was Jorg Sangumba, arguing for his group of freedom fighters to establish a trans uh, transitional government led by United Fort before elections could begin to rebuild the most damaged and uncontrolled regions of the country. Next was Iko Carrera, who was MPLA clique who promised to provide more, more leftist government for the Angolan people, whose lives and wealth had been squandered by prior regimes. When Iko finished his declaration, a new leader questioned the legitimacy of the immediate post independence elections when there was much work to be done outside of Luanda's political circles. The days wore on as more groups looked to, to, to the podium to offer their answers to the future of the mandate. Blocks began to form around the two major parties. Only well, a few series continued to remain, but Lavelle could not pull his full support behind any of them. The answer to Angolan freedom may be more complicated than we expected.
government. Although the withdrawal from the country was more complicated than declaring the success of government, it was one of the most important pieces of the puzzle that General Lavelle was entrusted to solve. Unity's higher-ups were much more agreeable than the MPLA, with Chairman Nito showing far more sympathy with Cameroon than Washington. While far more risky option than either of the two main blocs, the general could choose one of the smaller, more flexible leaders so such a decision could lead to nothing short of an escalation of conflict. Had Angola not seen enough bloodshed? Returning to his quarters, the general had representatives squabbling, uh, squabbling amongst themselves, unaware the burden of their late future lay on his shoulders, not theirs. Don came as Lavelle stepped up to the podium and took deep breath. In the interest of the OFN mandate of Angola, I will support the transitional government of Daniel Chipenda and FNLA. Oh. Independence Day. Leo gazed back at the jubilant city before stepping onto the air pad. He was, uh, he was part of the last set of flights out of Angola. After all, the big wags had finished signing papers and making deals. He opened up his wallet to see the picture of mom and dad, still smiling back at him when he departed for Africa. He shifted himself on his cane, picking up the faint noise of local music amongst the bustling airbase. The Angolans seemed happy enough, no more tanks and bombers in their towns. He'd taken a bullet in his knee from some sniper, God knows which side. Was it for nothing? Was it having to go home with, to Akron with a cane like some retiree he got all, from months of wading through forests and villages with 20 different rebel factions aiming to kill him? He climbed aboard the transport plane and peered out from a window to see a small truck carrying at least a dozen young boys, chanting and flying their flag. They stopped and drove circles, hoisting that banner up as it was consumed in a cloud of dust. Maybe, he mused. The reward was that they wouldn't have to take a bullet. My mind will never forget those days in Luanda. And my friend, that is the end of this video campaign. So we don't have the MPLA, we don't have UNITA, we have the FNLA. Um, interesting. That's us! Roberto! Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Well, there's a lot of napalm attacks for Angolan Army. We still have infighting here. Angolan Army's pretty good, though. Napalm attacks. Uh, liberal conservatism. Well, alright, I guess we're that. Demon Demosthenes. We have him. We have Jose. We have Sangumba. And Chitunda. The economy, though, it's not bad. We set these guys up to be very, very good. But even with this, please go ahead. But may the peace last. But if you enjoyed this video of us actually for finally playing as one of the mandates in Africa, the offend mandates, please consider leaving a like. Uh, free France is disgusting. Uh, check out my Discord link in the description below if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great Angolan rest of your day.